More fiscal justice. Europe's hunt for tax evaders. In the interview, Thomas Eigenthaler, chairman of the German Tax Officials Union. Mr. Eigenthaler, you're chairman of the German Tax Officials Union. Do you like paying taxes? I've never met anyone who likes paying taxes, and it's not something I enjoy either. But we have to be clear, taxes are the price we pay for government services, or let me put it more dramatically, they're the price of unity, justice and freedom. Many think taxes are too high in Germany and other European Union countries. They don't want to pay so much and take their money to other countries. Trying to smuggle their way past the state treasury, if you like. What's your answer to that? I'm always skeptical when someone says their taxes are too high and they're going to make their own decisions regarding tax. That's not okay. The federal parliament, the Bundestag, the Bundesrat, they determine the tax rates and they do it independently of what the state needs. So you can't have individuals taking the law into their own hands. I condemn that. How much undeclared revenue do you estimate Germans have in tax havens? No one knows exactly. It's not declared, after all. But serious estimates put the amount that Germans have in Switzerland at about 150 billion euros. Another 30 billion is stashed in Luxembourg and around 20 billion in Liechtenstein. Germans have an estimated 400 billion in untaxed earnings worldwide. Those are immense amounts, and there are many tax violators and tax fugitives across the EU, too. So EU leaders are trying to clamp down by introducing a cross-border exchange of banking data. For example, authorities would be informed if a German opens an account in Liechtenstein and how much money he or she has there. What do you think about that? I'm glad it's been discussed so quickly as a consequence of the revelations on offshore data. And in Germany, we've had the tax evasion case involving Uli Hoeneß in quite a dramatic fashion. That's led to some real momentum in Germany, but also in Europe. But coming from the tax profession, I'm skeptical too. It takes more than statements and lip service to convince me. I need concrete action. So far, I've only heard about what they're considering. Luxembourg says it won't budge unless Switzerland signs up too. And that doesn't sound too promising. Why is Luxembourg saying that? Does it want to maintain this business model in which it gives asylum to tax exiles? EU nations and their tax policies are in tough competition with each other. There are countries without an auto industry or heavy industry that live off such business models. For them, it's an existential issue. That's true of Liechtenstein, Luxembourg or Switzerland. Or indeed, the tax havens where usually there isn't much else. We have to reach an economic compromise with these countries so they can abandon these pernicious business models. But what do you envision? What has to happen? The dependence on this banking world must be undone. It must be dismantled. Together with Europe, these countries must come up with ideas on how we can move forward together. How they can release their economies from this monotony, from this one single business model, as some countries do. If we actually get to an exchange of data, that would be the end of banking secrecy. Is that a problem in your view? 
I support this exchange of data. There is no other way unless countries promise transparency and exchange data. Then we wouldn't need banking secrecy and we wouldn't have to buy CDs containing information either. That would all become obsolete and superfluous. That's the future we want and then countries have to put this immense competition behind them. Data exchange is one thing, but you also need people to evaluate it. Are the tax authorities sufficiently prepared for that? That's one major problem, that there are urgent calls for this exchange of data, particularly among politicians ahead of the elections, but the data isn't just going to come out of the blue. We need channels for it, and there has to be someone to evaluate it all. Right now, we wouldn't have the staff. What's it like in German tax offices, for example? The German tax offices were almost bled dry in the last 10 to 15 years. For example, in Bavaria, we have an economically strong federal state with high tax revenue. The regional audit office found that there were 20% too few tax auditors, and the audit office there, an independent authority, categorized the situation as alarming. And that's what it's like everywhere in Germany. There are, of course, many firms that engage in tax avoidance. One of the most spectacular cases is the U.S. corporation Amazon. It's moved its operations to Ireland for tax reasons. What do you say to such cases? It's a completely legal tax avoidance strategy. But shouldn't there be a clampdown there too? The state, under the rule of law, ensures that laws are followed on the one hand, but there are things in the law that one can avail oneself of. That's human, and it's legal. So in that sense, tax avoidance is acceptable in my view, but one shouldn't exaggerate. When it comes to tax-dodging acrobatics, artificial forms, fake contracts, operating foreign subsidiaries at costs that are too low, there we need a crackdown. Yes, but uniform tax rates are probably unrealistic, don't you think? It will never be possible to create uniform tax rates, but countries should be looking to find a basic consensus. You can't have one state getting rich at the cost of another. You've mentioned some big-name tax dodgers, for example Uli Hoeneß, president of Bayern Munich Soccer Club, who had bank accounts in Switzerland and then turned himself into the authorities just before he was about to be discovered. Do things like that annoy you? When you've worked at a tax office for almost 40 years, like I have, you become inured to it. You realize things like this are only the tip of the iceberg. For me, Hernes was the tip of the iceberg. Of course he's famous, but there are many others doing the same thing. And when it comes to millionaires, the super rich, we're often told by the audit office that we're not carrying out enough tax inspections. Do you mean if you had more staff, you'd achieve more? The tax union is calling for more staff, but we're basing that on the estimates by the regional and federal audit offices. Everywhere, people are saying there's no way we can implement this highly complex tax law with the workforce we have today. We have a serious enforcement deficit. Anyone who turns themselves into the authorities before being caught usually gets away with impunity. Is that a good rule? Self-disclosure is an institution that has existed for a hundred years, and I think we shouldn't abolish it completely. There are a lot of things that happen within normal boundaries where you forget something or make a mistake. And that recourse to honesty shouldn't be denied the citizen who has perhaps been honestly paying taxes for many years. But when it's a major crime involving tax evasion, involving millions over decades, with the intention of deceiving the Treasury, then I don't think they should be let off. What about the enablers, for example, the banks who in part advise people to set up such accounts in Switzerland and so on? 
In the past, there have often been indications that Swiss banks, but also large German banks, were instrumental in creating business models that helped out German tax evaders. But many large banks in Germany, as well as in Switzerland, have already paid millions of euros in penalties into German state coffers. They've bought their way out. They pay a few hundred million and then they have a clean sheet. And perhaps it's still even worth it at the end, even taking into account a penalty. The penalty is taken into account. Every tax dodger pays it via the banking fees. The bank does nothing for free. All tax evasion incurs fees, even if they're on undeclared earnings. The German tax authorities bought CDs with data on tax dodgers or tax exiles, and they paid millions for that. Do you think that's a good tactic? Paying for tax data isn't a very charming solution, that's for sure. But you shouldn't ignore the facts. A tax evader is denying the state, the tax office, the necessary information things that should be disclosed in one's tax declaration. If the tax evader does that, the state can't just stick its head in the sand. It has to take action. It's even its duty to acquire such data if it's recoverable. Experts say that people would be more willing to pay taxes if they believed state institutions were really efficient. Isn't that part of the problem? Well, in my view, again, it's taking the law into one's own hands. We live in a democracy. Parliament decides how things should be, and citizens can only change things through their right to vote, for example, in the German elections this fall. But they can't say the state is spending their money in the wrong way. We have a representative democracy, and it's not one where each individual taxpayer has a voice. Mr. Agenteller, thank you. A pleasure.